What's up everyone, in this video we have some CleanSpark news to go over, they just released their mining update. I also want to look over their chart. And while today is going pretty good so far, I want to talk about yesterday and the outflows we saw from the spot Bitcoin ETFs. Well, last week was a fantastic week and the Bitcoin ETFs pulled in $2.2 billion in net inflows. This week is off to a rough start, big surprise. On Monday, Bitcoin ETFs posted a $541 million outflow the largest since May 1 of 2024. iBit, who's known for inflows much more than the other funds, they did see an inflow that day, $38 million, bringing them to $26 billion in net inflows. The other funds saw outflows, however. Fidelity's fund lost $170 million nearly. They're still sitting right around $10 billion of net inflows even with that. ARK's spot ETF also saw some outflows to the tune of over $100 million. And of course, GBTC, they saw some outflows, $63 million. Their net outflows now a cumulative uh, $20.2 billion. You can see that basically all that money flowed into the other funds. It is a good sign that on a day like this, GBTC wasn't one of the heaviest sellers. To me, that is a very good sign. And you could say that things are marginally better where the Ethereum spot ETFs are concerned. But yeah, net outflow 63 million. I mean, when does this change for Ethereum? BlackRock's spot Ethereum ETF, however, did see an inflow. And in terms of net inflows, they're sitting at about $1.3 billion. However, that does not make up for the net outflows from Grayscale. ETHE that day saw $10 million of net outflows, bringing its cumulative net outflow total to three, uh, a little over $3 billion. So the spot Bitcoin ETFs have clearly been a great thing for Bitcoin, Ethereum not as much, but I do suspect as we get closer to alt season, as we get closer to the end of the rally where the euphoria is at its highest, that's when money flows into these other smaller funds. When people start thinking, all right, Bitcoin has ran, it is time to get into these alts that haven't ran as much. The money flows from Bitcoin and goes into the smaller cap cryptos. You guys know I've been following this ascending channel. We kind of have, you know, respected this for the most part. There was a brief period where we broke under it, but once we broke over it, we did see a gap up, a break under it brought another gap down. So this is definitely a clear level to watch and it has been playing out as a resistance so far. Now, as for the support on this ascending channel, we have bounced off this multiple times and it's kind of going in the direction of the moving averages. See how the moving averages are kind of pointing in this general direction. It is like what a 45 degree angle. You see these angles all the time and these are trends that are pretty clear. You can see we're in a clear uptrend. We are riding these supports and we are finding resistance on this line here i do think the market is no longer following this you know this kind of a descending trend that we were in this broadening pattern we in my opinion have broken out and bitcoin is attempting to finally hold that previous cycle peak we tried here and we broke back under i think a lot of this is just due to the election uncertainty where we are in this timeline right now and another thing to look at is we do have potentially a head and shoulders unless this is invalidated but you can see this shoulder here ahead. If we pull back and do kind of another bump, that would look like a head and shoulders. Last time we have seen a head and shoulder or inverse head and shoulders, we have actually seen the inverse head and shoulders. And this was back in 49K August times. You guys remember this inverse head and shoulder? We hit the head, two shoulders, and we went on a nice run. This might bring us down if we do flash a head and shoulders. So just keep an eye on how our candles print over the next few days. I would like to see us gravitate towards the moving averages and respect them. Better yet, respect them along with this ascending trend and continue this uptrend. I would like to see this uptrend hold intact and help us to break our all-time high. Am I expecting it this week with the election? Not necessarily. I think we're going to see some good days and some bad days. We, of course, have FOMC as well on Thursday, and it is going to be a volatile week. I don't think we're just going to see nothing but green from here. I could be wrong. I would love to be wrong about that. But, you know, there's going to be volatility. We're going to see these good green days and some really rough red days. The market is going to be a whipsaw. I like that word. Now, I do want to go into CleanSpark. They did release their mining update, and we'll look over their numbers real quick, and then we also have some upcoming things to look out for. So their Bitcoin mined in October was 655. This is roughly a 30% increase month over month. Bitcoin mined for the current year 2024 is 5,734, of which they have held the vast majority. Same thing here with this update. They're holding the vast majority of their Bitcoin. This is the time to do so. I love what they're doing. Their total Bitcoin holdings as of the end of October was 8,701. The Bitcoin sold in October was 2.78 Bitcoin. Their deployed fleet is now 196,000 machines. You guys remember when they were under 100,000 machines? Remember when it was like 60,000 machines? This is crazy. Soon their deployed fleet is going to get to 250,000 or one fourth of a million machines running. That's crazy. That is a lot of machines. Average fleet efficiency, 20.89 joules per terahash. You want to see this down. The lower this is, the better. 
month end operating hash rate of 31.3 exahash per second this is fantastic that hash rate has grown dramatically their average hash rate throughout october however was 29.63 exahash so not necessarily over that 30 yet average fleet efficiency of 20.89 joules per terahash an average of 21.14 bitcoin mined daily the high reached 22.94 Bitcoin. As I said, they sold 2.78 Bitcoin during October, at an average price of 62,470. We also have a completion of the grid acquisition. It was completed on October 30th. We also have something coming up by the end of November. Well, electrical installation for both sites will be in the end of November in uh, Wyoming. There's going to be two immersion cooled Bitcoin mining data centers, 75 megawatts total. So by the end of November, the electrical should be figured out. Then it's just a matter of getting the machines in. This should probably come by end of year, another five exahash. And another one exahash we should see added on before the end of this year as well uh, from Clinton, Mississippi. The construction of two Bitcoin mining sites near Clinton, near Clinton is nearly complete. They'll be delivered to CleanSpark fully turnkey by mid-November. Operations expected to begin in early December. And like I said, this will be about a one exahash per second there. Now looking at CleanSpark the other day, we did fill our gap down here. You'll see that the market dropped this down and essentially filled this gap down in the nines. I think we may get a little bit of sideways action. We have kind of this clear resistance up here and then we have an ascending support, I'd call it. And if you actually go back here, please ignore all this random writing everywhere. But you'll see that, you know, we're following this general uptrend, but we're also finding resistance at this, you know, resistance level. We can't break and hold above. I do think we're going to get this tightening pattern until we break out. We are going to probably, you know, try to go up to this range, get rejected, come down, try to break lower, get rejected, and just keep kind of bouncing until Bitcoin and therefore CleanSpark breaks out and goes on to rally. We need Bitcoin to break those all-time highs. The miners aren't going to rally, in my opinion until Bitcoin breaks all time highs. This is what the market's waiting for. This is what the Bitcoin miners need for these Bitcoin miners to be profitable. And this is obviously what Wall Street's waiting for as well. Once Bitcoin breaks that all time high, CleanSpark, in my opinion, is going to flip this $13 area as a support. This high 12, low 13 area is a resistance. We cannot break over it. We did just go up and fill our gap, however. So now we have taken out our gap on the downside. We have taken out our gap on the upside. We do have one more gap that we almost filled back here in the sevens. I kind of doubt we're going to see it, but if we do fill that gap, that would be one last major buying opportunity. I think we're not going to see it though until next cycle. We are trying to hold the 50 MA. We did kind of break over it and see a reaction. We broke under it. We tried to go back in. I think that's a pretty good sign. It also has to do with how the day's going today. Now keep in mind, CleanSpark is reporting their earnings way at the end of this year, and this is going to be the period ending September. So October, November, December, they'll have a great idea on that earnings. They'll be able to give some very accurate forward guidance. If we see Bitcoin rally throughout, throughout you know, November and December, we still have time in this quarter to get these miners to expecting profitability. They probably wouldn't be yet though. If they had to give forward guidance, just based, if Bitcoin stayed at this price throughout the next two months, I think they would probably give forward guidance of unprofitability. They're expecting in the upcoming earnings an unprofitable quarter. They're expecting at $88.7 million in revenue, which will be a decrease quarter over quarter. Year over year, that would be a pretty decent increase, however. In my opinion, the Bitcoin miners are really waiting for Bitcoin to break out. The halving and this kind of multi-month consolidation from Bitcoin has definitely hurt the miners. But in my opinion, they will continue trending higher over throughout this bull run. In my opinion, the bull run is not over. One thing I do want to show you guys on the four hour and a very good reason we dropped is we are looking at a bearish divergence. We double topped here. However, the price was dropping on the RSI. You'll see this top is a lower high on the RSI. The momentum was dropping. However, we saw basically the same top here. Those bearish divergences, keep an eye on them. As well as the bullish divergences. Look at this on a shorter term time frame. so keep that in mind. Normally longer term time frames hold a little more weight, but look at the price dropping. You'll see the price clearly dropping, lower lows, but what are we seeing from the RSI from this point? We are seeing higher lows. We're seeing the RSI rise. You know, the RSI bottomed out here. The price seems to have bottomed out there. This is a clear bullish RSI divergence. The momentum is starting to shift. Is this enough to break us higher? I would argue that we need Bitcoin to break out as well. CleanSpark, in my opinion, is going to stay stuck in this range, like I said, until we get a breakout. I think Wall Street's just going to manipulate this stock up and down. I think we are going to kind of follow this range going from the 950 area, 
going to about 12, 13. We're probably gonna pop in here until Bitcoin breaks out. This could come after the election and this week and all the volatility here. If Bitcoin breaks out, finish this Q4 strong and have CleanSpark start heading its way towards $20 by the end of the year, I think that is more than possible if Bitcoin can break out. If Bitcoin doesn't break out, you know, CleanSpark could be in this range by the end of the year. I expect a Q4 rally. That is what we have seen every past halving. The market doesn't like uncertainty. Once things are figured out, as long as there isn't a bunch of issues, which I kind of expect, once we get through this election, once there is a winner, I don't think the market cares which, I think Bitcoin will rally. It doesn't matter which one wins. It doesn't matter in my opinion. Once we're out of the uncertainty, that is what the market is worried about. The uncertainty of not knowing which. Once we know which, the market can breathe a sigh of relief and be like, all right, let's 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 do this. Let's finish this up. But anyways, what do you guys think about Bitcoin? Are we going to see new all-time highs before the year ends? Are we going to see new all-time highs in November? How do you feel about CleanSparks mining update? We should be seeing more hash rate come online this month and a nice boost to end the year as well. But thanks as always for watching, guys. Brace for volatility. It is going to be a crazy week. Thanks as always, and I'll see you next time.